Hello everyone and welcome back to 27 Fox Place. We've been getting more sunny days but the temperatures have only been in the 60s and there's a few more spring cleaning tasks that I need to do in the kitchen today. <laughs> but spring fever is starting to set in and when the thermostat climbed up to 80 today I had to cut the cleaning short <laughs> so that I could spend a little idle time sitting outside in the sun. Keeping the kitchen clean is my biggest challenge throughout the day and my biggest hurdle is after dinner when I'm mentally and physically done for the day. <laughs> but I also love to pour my first cup of coffee in a clean kitchen and the one habit that has made the biggest difference is putting the dirty dishes straight into the dishwasher instead of letting them pile up in the sink. And we usually run the dishwasher once a day and I prefer to run the dishwasher at night so that I can empty it first thing in the morning but it's not always full enough so I had to run the dishwasher after breakfast breakfast this morning and if I can't unload the dishwasher first thing in the morning I always try to unload the dishwasher before I start working in the kitchen. I wanted to escape for a while Thought that a couple of drinks could ease my mind I've been thinking of you for two weeks straight I know that I need to get myself back in the game Someone said your name had a ton of if you're new here, my name is Randy and I live in Southern California with my husband and our two fur babies, Ace and Callie, and I make videos for cleaning and organizing motivation. So if you enjoy this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I wash the jar for the coffee beans before I refill it with fresh beans and once the vacuum seal is broken, coffee beans will stay fresh in an airtight container for up to a week and we go through coffee beans pretty quickly but we won't be able to use up this entire bag in a week and coffee tastes much better when the beans are fresh and of course it finally occurred to me that we could vacuum seal the beans that we can't use in a week. So after I filled up the jar that we keep on the counter, I split the rest of the coffee into weekly portions and I can store the vacuum sealed bags in the pantry. And when we cut the bag open, we can wash them out so we can reuse them. And because the bags are reusable, it cuts down on the amount of plastic we use.
Some of you may have noticed that I've been using a new floor cleaner and the hose on my Hoover broke and it wasn't worth the time or the expense to try and fix it. The hose that draws the water into the machine was cracked so it was leaving a lot of water behind on the floor, but the suction wasn't that great to begin with and the battery usually died before I could finish cleaning the entire floor. So I wanted to try an entirely new brand and I've been using this new machine for a few weeks now and so far I'm really impressed with its performance. It was very easy to set up and it operates like the other machines that I've had in the past and the battery life lasts long enough to mop the entire floor twice and it leaves almost no water behind so it might be a good choice for hardwood floors. I try to link as much information as I can in the description box but if you have any questions or if you need a link to something that isn't listed please be sure to let me know in the comments. It has a docking station to hold the brush and filter while they dry and the only complaint that I have so far is that it has a built-in battery so I can't store the machine away in the closet while the battery charges. It has a self-cleaning feature to keep the brushes clean and it gives an alert if the brush gets tangled and so far that's only happened once and it was very minor and the machine has a slight delay before it turns on or off but it turns off automatically when the handle is upright and it turns back on when the handle is lowered which is a nice feature to have when I have to stop and move something out of the way or empty the tank. The water tank is about half the size of my old machine and when I first saw the size of the tank I was tempted to pack it up and send it back, but it turns out that running out of water isn't a problem. The machine doesn't seem to dispense a lot of water and it removes all the water from the floor so that it dries almost instantly. I try to pull out the fridge and clean behind it at least once a year. Dust collects on all sides of the fridge and the walls behind the fridge and it's something on my spring cleaning checklist but sometimes it gets done as early as January and sometimes it doesn't get done until the fall. I try to limit the time that I spend cleaning to about 30 minutes a day give or take and then I spend about an hour a week cleaning in one zone and I'll link those videos if you want to see what that looks like but when it comes to annual and semi-annual tasks I try to squeeze them in when I can and I've been trying to find a way to explain my cleaning schedule in a way that's not completely convoluted. Some of the calendar months have four weeks and some have five and my cleaning schedule takes eight weeks and I work on the upper level one month and the lower level the following month working from top to bottom. So if a month has five weeks then I have an extra week to take care of whatever I need to or in most cases catch up on what I need to and this schedule helps me to keep track of what needs to be done. Thank you.
The fridge has rollers, which makes it easier to move, but it's heavy and I still struggle to get the fridge out and back in again. But it's much easier to push than it is to pull, but trying to keep the fridge straight is a challenge, <laughs> and I always have to stop and realign the fridge with the opening so that I can push it back all the way. Cleaning the coils on the fridge needs to be done a few times a year to keep the fridge running efficiently, but the coils aren't exactly easy to get to and they're not easy to see. And the crevice attachment on the vacuum cleaner is long enough to reach the coils, but it doesn't remove the dust very well. And the paintbrush does a better job of removing the dust, but it's hard to maneuver the brush in the tiny space in order to get the dust out. So I'm using a combination of the two to loosen the dust and vacuum it out. was surprised to see that the grill cover wasn't that bad and I wanted to mop the floor before I put the grill back so I just rinsed it off and set it aside to dry while I finished up in the kitchen. I try to wipe down the kitchen cabinets once a week and I start with the upper cabinets and I work my way around the room and it takes less than 10 minutes to do and I just use a damp microfiber cloth to cut through the grease and remove the grime and I've tried several different intervals for cleaning the cabinets but I found that the easiest way to keep them clean and looking their best is to wipe them down every week but sometimes I can only manage every other week and the color on these cabinets makes it hard to see the dirt until the light hits them at just the right angle but my goal is not to keep things perfectly spotless but I do want to keep the grime from building up on the cabinets because the more grime the harder it is to get them clean again without damaging the finish. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away show us where we are 
What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? I wonder. How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? As a general rule, it's better to clean from the top down, and I like to clean all the upper cabinets that I need the ladder to reach first, and once the upper cabinets are clean, I can put the ladder away and work my way around the bottom cabinets. And I just use a damp microfiber cloth to clean the grease and grime from the cabinets, and I have to stop and rinse out the cloth a few times, and I try to wring out as much excess water as possible so that the cabinets stay pretty dry. The oven is a semi-annual task and we stop using the oven when we start running the AC <laughs> and I try to remember to clean it after the holidays and again at the beginning of the summer when we stop using the oven. When it's dark from so far away and show us where we are It really makes me wonder The self-cleaning cycle on the oven takes several hours and then I need to wait for the oven to cool down so I ran the self-clean on the previous day. So all I need to do now is wipe out the ash that's left behind. And the self-clean isn't completely odorless but it's not exactly overpowering but I do like to open the windows when I clean the oven and I use the regular cleaning cycle most of the time and it's not enough to get the oven completely clean. There's a few splatters that get left on the inside of the oven but the longer cleaning cycles use more energy Energy, so the regular cycle is good enough. We have KitchenAid appliances and I can't say that I love them. They have great features and I love their look, but there have been problems with every appliance. The enamel on the bottom of the oven is starting to chip off. And when we first got the oven, the glass on the door shattered while I was making fries. glass on the door doesn't clean quite as well with the regular clean so it still needs a little bit of work but it's much easier to clean than the inside of the oven and I just use a razor blade to gently scrape off the gunk that didn't burn off.
we have travertine tiles downstairs and when the floors were first installed, some of the grout color was washed out in some sections, so there are some areas that are darker than others and it can be hard to tell if the grout is dirty <laughs> or if it's just a darker color than the rest of the floor. I usually mop the entire floor once a week and I'll use a cleaner when I do and then I'll usually mop at least one more time during the weekend and one reason I like the wet back is that it vacuums and mops at the same time and it picks up all the dirty water from the floor which helps to keep the grout clean. This new floor cleaner is so nice to use that I've actually been mopping the floor more than I usually do. It's quiet and it glides smoothly over the floor and because it dries almost instantly, I can mop anytime and I don't have to worry about the foot traffic on the floors. The machine is designed to clean hard floors, but I can use it on very low pile like this outdoor mat that we have in the kitchen. And once the floors are clean, I just need to rinse out the collection tank and put the machine back on the base to recharge, and then I can run the self-clean cycle to clean out the roller. That's all for today. If you like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up and remember to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications before you go. And thank you so much for spending your time with me today and I hope to see you next time.